Hey, what's going on traders? It's Johnny here at TraderX. Thank you guys so much for tuning back into the channel. It really, really does mean a lot when each and every single one of you tune on back in every day. But as usual, I want to go ahead and update you guys on my day trading and let you know how it went today. And as you guys can see from your screens, unfortunately, today was a red day. I was down $62.29 on ticker symbol TQQQ and additional $15.44 on ticker symbol SQQQ, right? As far as my open position on Tesla, it did lose me an additional $36.90 today. And as you guys can see on my orders today, I did trade quite a lot, right? So um, the timestamps are here on the left for you guys as far as when I was buying in and out. The quantity that I was trading with is located over here. But right in the middle is the ETF itself. And the price points are here on the right. But I'm going to go ahead and get right into today's recap. And what I mainly wanted to focus on as usual is what I felt led to me being red on the day today and how I can improve heading into the rest of the week, right? And as you guys can see on your screens, we currently are looking at the NASDAQ future on the one day, one minute chart. And what you guys will notice is that we had a very consistently um, bearish pattern today, right? So the market was selling off all day today. And although the direction was very clear on the day, I struggled um, a great amount today in terms of identifying direction itself right so in hindsight you can say there was a very clear pattern but as i was trading throughout the day this thing was very choppy and all over the place and what i mean by that is it would sell off aggressively break above the ema break back below it push back above it before it actually sold off it would break above the ema below above below above before it would actually sell off right and so it would do that all day it would it would become really choppy for you for a period of time before it actually started to sell off even more on the day and so that's definitely where i struggled i would hop into a trade right it would be going my way then it would completely switch directions i would switch over to the other etf and then it would just switch on me again right and where i really went wrong today was i thought that the nasdaq was going to bounce every single time it approached the bottom vwap levels and so, for example, on this time, it did end up bouncing a few times, right? When it when it came down a certain times, it would approach uh, close to the bottom view up, but it wouldn't actually bounce and start to recover the way I thought it would. What I was expecting was a Nasdaq, right? Somewhere along these lines where it was touching the bottom view up or even here where it sold off or even here on the day, right? This thing started to actually change directions for a bit for a small period of time, right? It became very choppy. But I thought given the fact that we were breaking above the EMA again and struggling to sell off that we were actually going to start to change direction and push up. And what exactly made me think that way? Well, in the morning, what I saw looking at the past 10 day, 10 minute charts, we were still trading right above here, right? And in my eyes, the market's been very bearish, right? So we had these nice little runs and we would have these small occasional pullbacks, right? And so as this thing already pulled back yesterday, I thought oh, in the open today we were you know going to touch the bottom VWAP and then bounce and potentially recover like that but that's exactly the opposite of what ended up happening right we actually hit the top VWAP and got rejected and continue to make these lower lows so although we were uptrending right for the past week or so we have now been starting to downtrend a bit what I mean is it'll we'll downtrend we'll make this lower high so it won't go higher than it did before right We'll make a lower high, get rejected, fall. Then it'll consolidate for a period of time before it actually got rejected again, right? So now, after market hours, what you guys will notice is that the NASDAQ did recover a great amount. And that's largely due to the fact that Google and Amazon and Microsoft, my apologies, reported earnings today. So as you guys can see, Google, both Google and Microsoft, you know, they shot up how much percentage? So a decent amount right so they they both had nice earnings that caused them to shoot up and the nasdaq followed through with that right so this week we are seeing a lot of tech stocks report their earnings and it is influencing the market but as you guys know for the big companies they do tend to report their earnings after hours so that's why we are seeing this big spike here right so that's ultimately um everything i wanted to talk about with you guys so as far as today went the direction I felt was clear but very choppy right and so what I can improve on heading into the rest of the week it's on days like today where I really really struggle in terms of my trading I can do one of two things either a I can make sure to not use a heavy position size right 
and manage my risk whenever I do decide to take a trade or B, I could have just walked away, right? Uh, trading on a day like today, you guys will see I traded for a long time today and it led to just me losing more and more money throughout the day. And it had to do with this choppiness that the Nasdaq was experiencing when it was consolidating and trading sideways. And so I was just kept losing um, a small amount on each trade, right? So I did a good job today of managing my risk on each trade. But what I didn't do a good job of was realizing it was not my day today, right? So I had a lot of trouble identifying direction. Direction was not clear to me. And in that case, I should have been done trading way sooner than I was, right? I could have saved myself money, time, and the energy spent just sitting at my computer trying to wait for this thing to finally reverse when it wasn't, right? As this thing started making new lows, I didn't feel like the margins were worth it in my opinion, to continue trying to get into the inverse ETF. But as you guys know, that ultimately, you know, I ended up paying the price. So I think today, if I focused more on the inverse ETF, I definitely could have done a better job of profiting and making a killing today, especially because direction one is in its favor. And if I, rather than tried predicting a reversal and just continue to go with the flow all day, right? As you guys hear me say countless times, I could have done a lot better today. So I think heading into the rest of the week, I'm going to stop trying to predict when a stock's going to actually reverse and I'm going to try going with the flow when it makes sense if there's enough margin available still, right? And and what, and what I do have to just notice that, for example, today, every single time the NASDAQ broke above the EMA, it struggled to hold, right? It would very quickly end up changing back directions back downward, right? So it would break above the EMA, struggle a hold, and then end up falling. It, every single time it broke above the EMA, it would struggle a hold, and then it would fall. So I should have kept that in mind, right? At least the first few hours, that's how it was trading, and it, it would probably carry on with the rest of the day, right? So that is something I did want to make you guys aware of as far as where the NASDAQ is at. You know, we did have a nice little pullback, but with the earnings of Google, Microsoft, we did see a little bounce, so we'll see where the direction is headed. We are still trading below the EMA. It could get rejected there and continue to sell off, or we could finally break above the EMA and start to make these higher highs. In my opinion, I think we are gonna get more of a pullback before we actually do start to trend up, but we let's see how the rest of the week plays out, right? That is everything I wanted to go ahead and talk with you guys about. <laughs> I will not be adding more to my Tesla position until the NASDAQ actually breaks above the EMA, right? So it did break above it for a brief period of time before it got rejected. So if it does manage to break above the EMA again, I am going to look back into, you know, adding shares into Tesla. And then if it were to break below the EMA, I'm going to go ahead and reduce my shares. So that's my plan as far as it goes for Tesla and, and in the long, right? As you guys will see, once this thing breaks above, I'm going to add more to Tesla. And once it pulls back and bounces off the EMA like it did here, right? It broke above it, pulled back and bounced, right? That's going to be a better indication for me that the NASDAQ is going to start to uptrend. As of now, we're not doing that, right? We're doing the opposite. So I want to wait till this thing's actually uptrending before I add more to my Tesla position. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk to um, with you guys about. I hope you guys um, found this informative and learned something new. If you guys are new to the channel, I really, really do appreciate you guys liking the channel or the video and subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps us out a lot. But other than that, I do have a post I will be doing tomorrow, right? As far as my trading goes, so you guys will be able to know how I did then. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys all have a really good rest of your day and you guys end the green today and I will see you guys in tomorrow's recap. Take care.